Welcome to Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle, conversations connecting to a healthier you, the show that gives you all the latest and greatest health and wellness information to inspire you to live a life of balance and joy. Debbie Carlin Boyle is a health and nutrition coach, personal trainer, and fitness instructor who helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to my show, Balanced Life with me, Debbie Carlin Boyle, and we're conversations that help connect to a healthier you. And I'm so excited because this is my first show in June, and I am now only going to be doing two shows a month. So I'm going to be doing the second week, the second Tuesday in June, and the fourth week in June, the fourth Tuesday in June. And the reason being is I wanted to do a longer format. So I really want to highlight our guests. So it's a 50 minute show today and we are a call-in show. So I'm going to invite you to become interactive with us. So the call-in number here is 323-843-2826. And you're going to see why you're going to want to call in because we're doing live readings with um, a very um, intuitive a person who can help you in your life today. So you may want to have a question that you want to ask, and we would love to hear from you. So having said that, having a balanced life means so many things and comes in many different forms. As a health coach, I know too well how important it is to help my clients find alignment in every aspect of their lives. Not to be ignored is the alignment of one's soul. Without it, we open ourselves up to going to dark places, which can ultimately lead to depression, which then takes away from our quality of life, which then fast tracks us to health issues. Today's show is all about trusting your soul. And my guest, Dear James, is going to tell us how to do just that. Dear James is an intuitive advice columnist, radio host, author, and consultant who offers insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. The insight, answers, and advice are intuitive and clairvoyant in nature and are derived from the universe source, which comes from our internal compass that speaks to our universal soul. Today, we're going to be taking live readings on the air. So again, here is the number so you can call in 323 843-2826. Ask a question if you're feeling stuck in some aspect of your life. If you have a fear or an obstacle you need to overcome, why not just give us a call? So here we go. Will you please welcome our guide to help us exercise our soul, my guest, Dear James. We're going to call you Dear James. Absolutely. Because thank that's you. your trademark. Yes. That's is. who you are. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Oh, it's a pleasure, Debbie. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. I'm very excited. We met months ago. We were trying to find a time that would be convenient for you, and we found one. We did. So here you we are. We made it work. Here we are. We're going to yes. do this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for Absolutely. joining us. So you have a really different interesting approach um to to sort of not curing but opening up the soul and and identifying how we have within us to change the directory of our life for the better and um i found it so intriguing when i met you and said oh we have to do a show about this but before we get into all the details and the nitty-gritty I would like to hear about you, where you're from, and how you got to where you are today in life. Uh, I'm a native Californian, uh, to, uh, primarily from San Diego and Los Angeles. Um, I started out in a whole different, in corporate America and uh, in finance and credit. So, and so where'd you go to school? Let's go. I'm going to make you go back oh even further. Went, so you did your childhood. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I am a. Uh, I raised in a Marine Corps family. Oh, so there we go. To go down the list of schools will be very challenging because oh, we, so you moved a lot. Oh, yeah. Every two years, you were somewhere being relocated. Be you know due to the was that tough of, for you? It was. It was in the sense at the time it was because you just as you began to make friends and you know kind of took root, you were being uprooted, and yet it's so foundational for me now as an adult. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was really challenging younger, but foundational. Yeah. 
that's why I always like to ask what your beginnings are because I think it has a lot to do for where you sit today you yes. know how and um, like you said it's kind of the foundation that got you on the road to this so where do so you got into before you went into the work world did you go to college did you I went to one year of college uh -huh. and it was a very challenging time of trying to make everything work on your own and uh, a couple, you know, two jobs, putting yourself through school and everything. Yeah. And all of a sudden I landed a, a job um, with Telecheck in the collection department. And all of a sudden within six months, I had been promoted six times. Wow. So I so went just kept a, moving up the yeah, ladder I, I there. I went at a very early age that the harder you worked, the more you got. Mm -hmm. And there, and it, because it was commission based. So at, you know, a tender age of like 20, 21, I was at one point making very good money, in, yeah. you know, collecting. And so that kind of was my beginning entree into uh, work in the corporate world and so And working forth. hard and knowing that that there was uh, there's a relationship between, like you said, hard work and um, earning a living. Yeah. So at what point in life, at what age, did you feel like you became, you had intuitive intuition and you knew that you could help yourself or others with that? The, the pivotal moment in year was 1994. Um, and then looking back, though, I realized that I had been utilizing it without being aware of hindsight. it. Hindsight. Hindsight. Yeah. Um, but there was an epiphany moment in 1994 when I attended a uh, one-day seminar um, at the Biltmore downtown in Los Angeles, uh, Richard Sutphin, who does a lot of past life regression work and everything. And I went as a volunteer. I went to help a friend who was a friend of theirs. And uh, we came back after the lunch session. And he said, oh, this woman, James, will you sit with her for this next session? She doesn't have a partner. I'm like, okay, sure. And we, he said, we're going to do a light uh, meditation, and then I want you to just receive what you get for the other person. And he said, don't judge it. And then, you know, when we will come out of the, the meditation, if you will, and you exchange the information. I'm like, okay. We did the light induction and everything, and the next thing I know, this, mu this movie starts playing. And for oh, me, it really? Was, oh, were, it was so, whole... okay, so tell me. So were your eyes, so you were meditating and she was meditating. Yeah. And you were sitting across from each other? She was in the row in front of me. Okay. Um, and I literally said hello to her and that was it. That and, was it, yeah. And kind of closed your eyes and let the movie play, as I say. Wow. And the next thing I know, I'm seeing all these things. I'm feeling it, feeling it you know. And I say to myself in my head, oh, this woman's going to think I'm nuts. Like, I'm crazy. If you share any of right. what, yeah, is, of what you're seeing. Yeah. And all I heard was, don't judge it. And I said, okay, okay. So I just kind of sat back, let it play. Uh huh. And then when it, when we came back out, she said, okay, you go first. And I was like, oh, God, of course. You know, like, <laughs> so I say to her, okay, well, I believe, you know, you live on a, a farm or a ranch. You have a lot of uh, uh, like walnut trees or nut trees. You sit on the front porch, there's swings, That's you have right. lemonade, and there's a horse, you raise horses, one's albino, it's mean, it bites you. Um, and about the time I said, and your marriage is very um, tumultuous. And as I said that word, the woman sitting next to her spun around and she goes, well, that's a good way to describe her marriage. Oh, so you hit you and, hit that nail on the head, yeah, sounds so like. Yeah, so there was this piece. And she goes, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, this is my mother. And I go, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so her mother would know. Right, yeah, yeah and then... I got very nervous at that point and I said, and okay, you've always wanted to be a writer and something else. And she basically, and I said, okay, that's all I have. And then she looked at me and repeated back almost verbatim. She's like, the trees you're talking about are acorn trees. We live on our five acre ranch. Oh the horse you're gosh. talking about is my daughter's, the albino horse, it's my daughter's. That's very specific. Very specific. And wow. she was literally like, and when she got to the end, and yes, my marriage is tumultuous, and yes, I've always wanted to be a writer, and I've never had the courage to do it. And when she finished, I looked at her and I said, would you excuse me? And I got up and walked you, out of the ballroom. that was tough for you. Yeah. That real, realization yes. that you had that power within you. Yeah. And you were verbalizing it for the first time. Yeah, for the very first time. And so I got up and walked out of the ballroom, and the, my friend who had brought me, said, uh, well, I got out there and by the time she arrived, she's looking and she said, you were doing that kind of like, what the heck was that dance? You know, like. <laughs> yeah, where'd that come from? Yeah, and she's laughing and I'm like, this is not funny. I'm like, I don't yeah. know what just happened. Yeah. And, uh, but that was the awakening. That was the moment that it all 
became spilled real. out. Yeah, that became real. It <laughs> yeah. became very real. So did you find that you were able to do that for other people? And is there a process to be able, or does somebody just have to ask you a question or meet you and you the movie starts playing? It can happen in all of the above. Um, I do it worldwide I, yeah. you know, with my clientele yeah. and everything, um, in person, via Skype, that type of thing, um, group sessions, corporate sessions. So it... It can be anything from love, life, marriage, money, finances, development of company. It's just I connect in, I listen, I can look at um, individuals, I'll, uh, just their first name, and I'll say, okay, tell me about Debbie. And yeah. I just start listening and I start writing down what they're telling me regarding that person okay, or the entity if there's a business and they're looking at acquiring something or who are the players or do, you know making changes or shifts. So you take it's, notes on that, and then you tell them the direction that comes to you that they should be heading in, heading in in that aspect. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. What a revelation to when you get to that point. So at this point, when that happened, where were you? You were working. You were doing the credit check. Uh, no, the, I was I was in Los Angeles at that point, and um, I was doing design and development, and uh, so I was. My previous life, if you will, was real estate based and design development, flipping houses. Um, so very much creative and real estate based. Mm -hmm. um, so it happened at that point. Um, and then I kept it, I say, I, I utilized it, kind but I kept did it, it quietly. I was yeah. doing it privately. Smart. Um, and continuing to do what I was doing in life until the universe kind of, they kept telling me, you have to show up. You have to show up, and I knew what they meant. They wanted yeah. me to wanted show up as dear James. Stand forward, yeah. Right, come yeah. forward, be utilize your gifts, mm -hmm. and I, of course, kept shaking my head. Yeah, no, 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 no. Thank you. I'll do it quietly. And finally, had enough of that and pulled the rug out from underneath of me. And you know, on the re everything I did, anything I did that had to do with real estate, finished. Oh, done. Okay. Red light. So you just you purposely ended it, or it naturally kind of you, you just put more energy into the being dear James than you did to being a real estate. Well, it became the it was very clear. Yeah, this is not going to happen. Right. Anything else I touched with real estate design development would not happen, and I literally had this discussion like, okay, you're you know you're not going to let this advance or happen, and I heard a very strong firm no. Wow. And I said, so I have to show up. And mm -hmm. they were like, yes. And I'm like, and I took a deep breath and I said, okay, okay, let's do this then because it's this is clearly over. It's not yeah. working. And it just opened green lights. Telling yeah, you you needed is, to be, which we're going to talk about how people yes. can tap into that, right? Exactly. Because that's amazing. And I've heard that, um, you know, I've been doing, uh, September will be three years of podcasting and live streaming. And so I've had several intuitives on the show at different, for different reasons and different things that, and all of them have said the same thing. It came, they came to a point in their life where they couldn't ignore it anymore. Mm -hmm. And everything else was knocking them down to push them up into stepping forward into what they should be doing. Yes. And, I, and, and you know, sometimes after hearing this, you kind of go, okay, am I gonna be knocked down <laughs> somewhere? Um, it's funny, but Char, who has a show here at UBN Go, um, she gave me a reading years ago, almost, um, I wanna say that I would be married about 36, 37 years ago. And I was at a, a, a turning point in my life and I, and I wanted to talk to somebody, you know, I came in with some questions about my future. We had a sit down talk. It was supposed to be 45 minutes. It was like two and a half hours. But in that time, she told me that I had this ability and that I should tap into it because if you don't tap into it, it doesn't manifest itself. And I thought, I, I thought, well, I'm a, in the commercial world, I'm a successful producer, I love being in TV and film, and I just let that go. But um, and now that she's here, I've actually called back in. By the way, everything she said to me yeah. about from the question I asked, which was basically, is my boyfriend going to become my husband and are we going to have a family? Everything she said regarding that and then some came true. Hmm. Everything. Right. So fast forward about two months ago, I called in on her show because she does live readings. Right. She knew instantly that she read me before a long time ago. Yeah. She knew instantly 
what was going down. She also said the same thing to me. She, she mentioned something about you need to nurture those. And somehow I don't feel that, I don't feel, compa I don't feel what you said you feel or any of the other intuitives that have been on the show have said. So I'm not sure how to implement that, but I just thought that was interesting. And she really gave me a belief into, um, intuition and into what the powers that one has to help others within seeing things and understanding and kind of past lives coming forward and helping others it was really eye-opening to me so um I'm, I, I really respect what you have powers to do and what you can do and how you're using it for the greater good I think it's wonderful and, and Thank you. A, thank you. And, and B, you know, it plays to the, what she's talking about is it plays to the topic of the show today because it's all about every single one of us is intuitive. Yes. Is clairvoyant. It's to what degree are we fine tuning the channel? To what degree do we listen and follow? To help ourselves. To lead. And yes. it's all about leading with the soul. Yes. It's, it's literally taking our ego, personality, mind and saying, okay, we've led life that way. Now we got to put it over in the passenger seat because the soul is saying, okay, well, no, we're not having any of this anymore. But you have to learn to listen to it. And I know because um, right. we yeah. talked about there, um, you can, the, the, you say that there are multiple bodies for us yes. and um, we have to identify them. So that's sort of the first and foremost thing that we have to do. You say mental, astral, physical, etheric, and divine. Yes. So what does that mean? How does that work? Well, mostly... For the vast majority of people, they think that they're a human. They're a human having this human life, human experience, no connection, limited connection. And, you know, the soul, the spirit, this type of thing is, I don't want to say an afterthought, but it's like, okay, I'm conscious and aware that it's there, that mm -hmm. I have it, but we don't exercise it. We don't engage it. People, it's, it's an afterthought. I'm the human with a mind, with a brain. So, and the body, the physical body is the most dense body, meaning the, at, at the bottom of the totem pole, if you will. Yeah. Everything from above is coming down into this body that we've created, this physical body. So, so are we too preoccupied with day in and day out life to really access our soul? Is that what you're saying? It's yeah, just people, too... are, people in this age of being connected, mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about how connected we are with the internet and smartphones and all of these devices, and you've never seen people more Disconnected. disconnected from each other they're yeah. disconnected from each other they're disconnected from their self they're living their lives on social media i mean their life that they're living is social media yeah it's not the life that's in like we're interacting yeah. right now right. looking at each other yeah. you know eye to eye yeah. having a conversation go into any restaurant and watch people sitting across the table from each other not talking on their phones yeah so there's this piece of the density of and that was all well and good. That was all okay up until yeah, a point. Yeah, I, I mean, the technology um, propels us and moves us forward in, in this lifetime, in this day and age, in very specific ways. But it also has pulled us back from things that we are capable of that we're not accessing, which right. is what you were saying. Exactly. And thereby, when we listen, when we literally stop and say, because it'll, you'll hear this all the time. I knew I shouldn't have done that, or I knew I was supposed to do X. And that is your soul speaking. Yeah. That is your, your, your true north, mm -hmm. your intuition, your absolute your purity gut. and divinity. Yeah. And they don't listen. Mm -hmm. And then they don't trust it. And it's, you know, like any muscle, like, a, you know, we exercise our bodies. Mm -hmm. We exercise in our diets. We exercise our minds, per se. Our brains. Our yes, brains. Absolutely. We fail to exercise our soul, our soul our spirit we okay. forget it's even there yeah it's just taken for granted it's elusive it's not tangible so if so um it, do you think that meditation is a form like you know my, well, what i was saying at the top of the show at the introduction like a balanced life means many many things and one of the things you know i do i talked about this with you the other day as i do that circle of life exercise with my clients are all these things what's out of balance what's not in alignment and meditation is on there or spiritual practice is on there which is basically 
are you accessing your soul? I'm asking them that and whether or not that's part of their life. And and it's about a 50-50. Friends and clients, what I find, whether they meditate or not, is meditation a form of accessing your your soul or or is that what we're what we're how one of the ways to get there or it's certainly one of the ways to get there and it's certainly a way that brings balance or peace mm -hmm. uh, for sure Pembroke Chodron you know said I've been meditating for you know I think she said 30 plus years and I still don't think I have it right and there's the beauty because people believe that they're not meditating correctly and meditation is simply trying to be calm mm -hmm. clear the mind sit with yourself reset, yes right reset and even if it's if it's three minutes five minutes if it's an hour whatever it may be there's no right or wrong way but it is a way that it calms you to where you can then listen to a higher state you know when it's your mind chattering right and you know then when it's more still when it's just a knowingness or a you know a soft voice a quiet softness then it's your soul talking and you come out of that too where you feel so um, relaxed, like you just had a sauna and a massage or something, you know, where you just kind of get, you're, you're coming away from the chatter. You know, I like to say there's lots of things snapping in our heads and we need to unsnap that sometimes. And sleep is very important, but it's not the only time we do that. And, right. and so being in a wake meditative state is really helpful. What other ways? What, what, um, cause, um, First, you have to make the decision to lead with your soul. Once you make that decision, what, how, does the, how does it manifest? How does the process work? Well, even before that, so if we go back to the other bodies, first you have to realize there are other bodies. You have a mental body, you have an energy body, astral meaning higher self, body, the etheric body of the whole of the whole. So okay. this, this isn't our first time at the rodeo. We're in reciprocity. 24 7 just as you and i are in reciprocity right now sitting right. across from one another mm -hmm. we're also in reciprocity with those that we can't see that are above you know on the other side of the veil if you will mm. they're just as much supporting and learning through us as we are with them being guided by them being really oh absolutely so and this is the part to recognize that truth first and foremost you have to recognize that truth if you're only in the mental and the physical body and you don't recognize the other the astral, the ethereal, um, the emotional, you know, we tend to we tend to stay in those three, mental, emotional, and physical. Those right. are the three primaries right. that everybody's, Which is what that's we the were human experience. About. Just day by day life, yeah, stuff. Then you have to get to the place of, okay, wait a minute, there's a higher place. There's the astral, the ethereal, we're being guided, we're being led. Yeah. And when we then open up to that, then it's like, okay, well, let me start paying attention to that okay. let me start shifting from the three primaries that you know the, the most dense of the three to the higher ones and, that's interesting and so when you shift so like throughout my life and being in my 60s I've had a lot of life and so throughout my life um little things come to me you know I lost my father at a very young age there's you know butterflies my grandparents were very important to me um, I've lost friends and family over the years that I feel like I'm still communicating with, which Char definitely brought to the forefront. Yeah. Um, so are these little moments awakenings for a person when they see, when they know, like there are times I just hear my father talking to me and I don't know why. I mean, they come to me in my dreams. My, my parents come to me in my dreams. My grandparents do. Um, you know, people who are alive and people who have passed both come to me in my dreams. Or is that accessing? Is that paying attention to the bigger, to the bigger self, to the, um, to the bigger, yeah, to the higher self, self, to the higher connectivity yes. and everything? Absolutely. And it's also one of the ways that when um, energy, loved ones have transitioned and they're on the other side of the veil, it's one of the ways they're allowed to communicate with mm -hmm. us. So it will be in funny ways, like whether it's a symbol, a sign, you'll uh, sometimes you get a puff of a scent mm -hmm. that you're, you know, it's your dad's cologne or something. There's yeah. no one in the room. You haven't had any. And all of a sudden, just this puff. Yeah. Or in the dream state and so forth. These are ways that when you're on the astral, ethereal, astral planes, you've transitioned. It's how they can communicate with us. Ooh. And so it's up to us, though, 
to number one, recognize them, yeah. to see them, and then to accept it, to embrace them, and to see, okay, and then engage. Because for power to, you know, the, the loved ones that have transitioned, they're not gone. They've transitioned. Right. We're all energy. Yes, so energy never dies. It gets, it transmutes. It just changes. Right. They're not a physical being anymore. Correct. They're no they're, longer in the yeah. physical state, but they're in the astral. Right. They're in the ethereal. So that's they're, what we say about ethereal and astral. Yes. And they guide us, um, it, you know, so there are those skeptics that will say when bad things happen to good people, where are those guides? Where are that? You know, you do everything right and you, you think you're making smart decisions or a big accident or something, and you th and then you don't, and suddenly all of that goes away because you don't believe that being good is, is being rewarded, let's say. Right. You know, um, how does that play out? Like, you know, I'm just curious about all yeah, this. Well, it's very intriguing to me. Yeah, because again, every, from a, everything is neutral from a state of divinity. Okay. It's only our humanness that says, that colors something and judges it and says, oh, that was a good thing, this was a negative thing. Okay. And if we were to step back from any act, no matter how painful, and there are obvious, you know, high trigger issues when, you know, murder, incest, rape, um, you know, things that are very challenging mm -hmm. for people. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy, if, if you ask when it's something good, people readily accept it. Yeah, oh, I can see that that happened. And you know, mm -hmm. when it becomes challenging or really challenging, that's when people wanna throw it away. And what they're meant to do at that point is to step back enough from it to look and see, oh, what's underneath? Because we all stop at the surface. There's too many times where it's easy to stop at the surface of an issue. Oh, you wronged me, you cheated on me, you, 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 you know, that's mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. Once you step back from it though, and you look and you say, okay, because each person is showing up, they're mirroring. So that you've come in to my life as a, a, a person, a friend, a, a, you know, a colleague, whatever right. it might be. And then we look to see what's the dynamic because you, it, this is your play, it's my play. Everybody's playing a role. They're playing the role I asked them to play before we ever came. Okay. So that's why you have to then stop and say, okay, so from a divine standpoint, we're all up, you know, I'm gonna say we're all upstairs before this ever, before we incarnate, before well, we come that's down. That's true. Yes. And we're sitting there and we say, okay, Debbie's gonna show up this way, James is gonna show up this way, this person's gonna show up, and we all make a pact, we agree. It's a soul contract, we agree. Yes, this is what's gonna play out. This is what we want to learn and experience. Yes, okay, then we incarnate and we forget. You know, we come through the veil and we forget, which is where we then experience life as we remember. We remember, we rejoin. Mm. And the, the only caveat to the whole experience is free will. So free will plays a role in how Meaning we Meaning we make our own choices. We have a choice. Correct. I know we have, a, I have a, um, I wrote it in here, that, that you, we have a choice that we, we're, how does choice affect achievement of a balanced life? And we, that's the free will you're saying. It's, that's the and choice. And choice is crucial. We are making choices every single moment. And the guides that guide us is intuition, our guides. It's a combination of everything that we are of our higher selves, correct? Correct. So I look at it and I call it the symphony. Okay. And I say when I intuit, when <laughs> I, I like listen, that. it's the symphony. Mm -hmm. And I say it's the whole of the whole. Mm -hmm. When somebody wants a solo, they step forward for me. And then I know, oh, it's your loved one. It's a high, you know, it, it can be an angel guide, Mother Mary, whatever it may be, their essence, their energy, it's very clear to me who it is. They make themselves known. Um, they, and it, it runs the gamut of the emotion from laughter to crying or whatever it might be, whatever the messaging is. But they step forward. And then when they're done, they recede back into the symphony, you know? So all of this is playing out for everyone all the time. Right. And it helps guide them to make the choice for you to make the your choice because Correct. I mean from what we wear today to yeah. how I do my hair, my makeup, you know, those the, whether I make a phone call or not to make yes. an appointment, all those are choices I make. Yes. Every, what we eat every single day, we're making a choice. Yes, and that is um, something I think we take for granted or we yeah. just kind we, of shove away, you know, and don't really realize that well, they're. Yeah, exactly. We're using. We, we chalk it up to the mind is telling us, the mental, the personality, the mind is yeah. controlling. 
as opposed to so tell me I, so salt. I'm gonna get a little bit off from our you know our talking points for a second so tell me um, we're, I I often struggle with this because I'm a reinvention uh, late in life in my 50s you know like I said I had a career as a producer I had a family a husband a marriage of 26 years a relationship of 35 I have two grown children and everything in my life changed it wasn't what wasn't how I planned it to be, right? Yeah. So I pictured something, everything I had pictured was completely different than where I sit today. Yeah. And there's a fear from where I sit today of being a re reinvention late in life, changing from a career that isn't um, as financially stable, not owning a home anymore, I'm being very transparent right now, yeah. um, and, 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 and a bit of a struggle later when, you know, I, I haven't struggled since I was 20 years old financially. So it now I am as a divorced woman in her 60s. And, and so uh, did I, was this the way I wanted everything to play out? It is, okay, it is. so go from there. <laughs> Cause, so, cause I question this and say, how did I get here? And I know a lot of people do that with yeah. their life at some point, especially if they, you know, when you're when you're when you're in your twenties and you're out of college and you're building a career and you're finding your mate and you're building a family and what a blah blah blah, that you're sort of in the fast uh, lane, right? You're right. rush, rush, rush. But when you've done all that and now you're here and somehow you got kicked to a side over here, you go, whoa. How did that happen? Right, you're like, wait a minute. What How did I <laughs> yeah. get here? And where? And the biggest right. question for me, James, really, right. is where am I going? Right. Because you know what I had back there was that much time, and now I'm here in my 60s, right. and this is a, the third act. So it's scary. It's yeah. really scary. But one of the, I mean, I want to comment on the piece of you know everyone go go go, and you've done 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 and done yeah. da, 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 and then listen to how many people say, I have all this, I did this, whatever. And I'm miserable. I'm unhappy. It's true. I'm not I'm fulfilled. Seen it. Seen it. I'm like, I, I'm like, how did I get here? They ask the same question. How did I get here? But from a different field. Right. From a right. different perspective. And that's yes. And so and, maybe that's what happens later in life. I don't know. You know, I, 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 you know, I've seen people have these long term, you know, 60 year plus marriages and happy as can be and nobody's truly happy we all have life's situations right. we deal with every single day big small that you know escalate whatever but um i you know i almost became um for my friends and my family i became kind of the story you know in this bigger world of uh in a broader sense of all of my acquaintances it was like oh did you hear what happened to Debbie? Oh my God! Look, right. look at what right. she, you know, like, and I'm thinking, did I have something to do with that? And then, you, and so hindsight, yeah. right? So now I'm going back, going, okay, I've always been into health and wellness. I always have since I was a little girl. I always paid attention. Once I realized how bad food, how food affected you, and your body, how you looked, how you felt, how you acted, all of that, I changed my life at a very early age. I was a teenager when I changed my life. So that's that. That was always back here, but you know, there's some. There's this wanting I've had, this need that I've had to do what I really wanted to do with my life, which is always have a family, which I have. But career-wise, I'm here instead of there, and it's it's very strange for me to see that. I got kicked, I almost got kicked out. I got kicked aside. And I'm wondering whether it's something I wanted so bad or manifested or created or I don't know how that happened. Yeah, so the first thing is to realize that, again, there are no mistakes. This is your play. Yes. And what, you know, I wrote down the word while you were talking about this earlier and, and I wrote down the word, one word, and it's a profound word, the word surrender. Mm. Because what's, what I'm hearing is like what's, holding you up or holding you back is this the masks the, the masks. need to be something i'm not well in other words it's the it's the when they say the masks it's the masks of what you thought it would be 
what you so you can't get to what you want it to be if you're not willing to surrender what what you had what you believed it to be mm-hmm. you have to be willing to let that go oh right because that piece is still in in certain ways you're still hanging on holding still, on to the life playing, i had you're still playing the I'm role i'm playing i'm still you're still playing that's right. that living trying to live that life living mm-hmm. that hoping that, it will come back correct mm-hmm. and that it, it, it's it's that's done right the, and what and then what comes after the surrender trust the trust that the life that you do know you want you know this life mm-hmm. you know it mm-hmm. and in fact if mm-hmm. you you know if you're looking back at it you can say i know i had all this and yes it was lovely and it was good but there was still something missing yeah there was for sure and that's why this is your play that's why you orchestrated all this because from a soul place you say okay if i haven't gotten there by this time if i haven't done it then x y and z will happen you my my husband you will leave or you know we we will separate Mm -hmm. you will all these things that are going to quote unquote kick you to the curb yeah (laughs) because did right but you see but you orchestrated it yeah because you're saying to yourself your soul is saying hey we you know they're knocking hello you know we came to do something we came and said we wanted to experience x and we can't get to x if a b and y and z are in the way Mm -hmm. okay and so this is again when they say to you show up you know when you were talking about char and you know connect and show up yeah it's about you connecting and showing up as your authentic true self so this whole reboot of my life and my career my life personal life my professional life this whole reboot is me trying to show up absolutely okay but i still have some garbage yeah um, (laughs) yeah 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 this (laughs) Meaning being helped in by by your guides, your my guides, guides yes. angels, higher yeah, self. Yeah, they're really. This is your team. I mean, we all have a team. Like a punching bag. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> a we have a bit. team. Upstairs, yeah. And they're there. Yeah. And, and we course. have to allow the team and ourselves to let go and go where we're supposed to go. Right? Exactly. There's a yeah. There's that beautiful saying, "Let go and God." It's like, let go and let Source Surrender. lead. Surrender. Trust. Listen. Because that that sound is there, that feeling that is inside, that's guiding you, that's saying you know what you know what it is, you know what you want to achieve or be, you know the life, and yet we're like, but because I can't see it and it's not tangible and it's not here yet, and I don't know what it's going to look like, totally. and what I, everybody totally. goes, Arr! and the brakes yeah. are on, and they're like, oh, because I can see this one, I know this one. You you do what makes sense, what it's, you think exactly. makes physical sense Correct. to you. All right, so knowing that, so having said this, and I hope this helps the audience, you know, by using me as an example here, how do I surrender? What are the steps? What are the things? What do we go into to um, help me get to where I'm supposed to be, let's let's say, okay. where I want to be. So one of the first things is, is for everyone to make peace with the word surrender. People have a negative connotation of the word surrender. They believe that it's to give up, to lose, you know, it's to true. surrender. Yeah, it's they, like it's, wartime or right, something. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's got this negative attached yeah. to it. Surrender, when you surrender, it is the most empowering thing you will ever do. Mm-hmm. Because and you're doing it with yourself. It's not that it, everybody else that's in your play that's external. They're external characters in your play. Mm-hmm. The surrender is with yourself. That's right. You have to, you know, for me in my my situation, show up. You have to show up. What mm-hmm. did that? I, what I had to do was surrender my entire previous life. So you did it. I had to surrender. I had to show up, which meant I had to surrender. I had to make peace with. Okay, you want me to do this? I'm going to do this. And that you're going to show me how. You're going to show me the way. Mm-hmm. So the first thing is realizing surrender is empowerment. Okay. It is not. Makes sense. It's not a negative loss. It's it's an empowerment. It's a positive. Right. From there, it's then trust comes right behind it or in concert with the surrender is the trust. The, the trusting that you know you're going to be led. This is your play. But your... you're still going to be able to survive. I mean, you know, we still have to earn a living. We still have yes. to, you know, put a roof over our head and, and all of that. So you you have to trust that's going to still happen and you're not going to be doing something that you absolutely or be in a place you don't want to be to make it happen. 
and or that you have to realize that even if you are placed in that situation momentarily or there's a reason, reason. Mm-hmm. and you have to trust the reason, the process, the surrender, because what is it doing? It's like a, a block of ice. We're finally chiseling away to get to a beautiful sculpture that lies within it. Mm-hmm. You can't, ne- r- rarely do people admire a block of ice. No. But they admire the, the ice sculpture that, sculpture sculpture that, that comes, comes from within yeah. it. And so this is that surrender piece. This is where it all chiseling. comes together and the trust and you're chiseling and you're listening. Even when it's, I mean, you know, I've, I I speak from experience. Yes, I mean, I, 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 can I've tell. Walked the talk. I can tell. I, I, you know, so, it's very helpful to me in the moment. Yeah. yeah it's, and, and that's what's required. And, and of course, it is challenging when you see everybody else still living a certain way and you see like it's not affecting them they're just and i mean this with you know in a pause they're clueless it's like it's just not affecting them yeah and yet everyone will have their time everyone will have their day in some way in some, some way shape or form, form if you're not doing what your soul came here to do you're going to get the whisper you're going to get the caution sign you're going to get the knocking and then you're either going to get the, the rug or the two by four. I mean, if you don't. <laughs> yeah, because so many times people, well, a couple of things. One, people think, oh, they're so lucky, you know. Oh, how lucky. You know, I, I like to see talk show hosts or something, and I'll be like, oh, they're so lucky. I wish I was sitting in that seat. Oh, there's, you know, the, oh, she just came from a wealthy family. They're so lucky, you know. And then the other part is judgment. Um, what are people going to think about me or what uh, or I don't want to be under a microscope, you know, and those mm-hmm. kinds of things. So there's kind of like this this back and forth balancing thing of trying to figure out um, or or getting rid of those fears, really. And that's something that I know is in here that, you know, we talked about the uh, um, the fact that people let fear keep them from moving forward. It's fear of judgment fear of failure which is always our successes if we allow it because that's the way we learn but it's so difficult you know i i i grew up in a time where there wasn't open conversation a lot of these types of conversations that i have my guests on my show or the everything that's out there with all the ways there's so many platforms for people to talk about this now and be heard um used to be taboo those are things you Put in the corner, you don't talk about it, you move forward and you do what you're supposed to do. You right. do what society says you're supposed to do. Right, you do what's, you know, what's quote unquote expected. White Jewish girl from the valley, you just right. go where you're supposed to go. Exactly. But yeah. now it's it's a different conversation. You know, it's a different dialogue. And um, it's hard when you've lived this much life with that other conversation and now to shift gears and say, it's okay. It's okay to be judged. It's What do you care? Right. Why do you care? Right, exactly. And and fear, there's a great misnomer. Um, I often speak about fear is your friend. Mm-hmm. And people kind of look at me sideways and, no, you know, and I'm, and I'm like, no, 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 look at it. Everything is energy. Mm-hmm. Money is energy. People are energy. The cosmos is energy. Fear, hope, love, energy. So when you realize it's all energy, so fear is just energy. And it either immobilizes you or, or it propels, propels you. you. Yep. And once you realize, oh, so make fear your friend. Yeah. We're not here to eradicate fear. That's a really tall order. No. You know, <laughs> well, it, there's no such thing. Yeah, yeah. there's no need to. There, yeah. The, the, the thing is to transmute it, transcend fear. Mm-hmm. And so when you're afraid of something, okay, well, what is it? Okay, I'm afraid of this. Okay, we'll start talking to fear. Start talking. Why am I afraid of this? What can I do to propel myself through this? what because to be immobilized by it is a non-starter so so getting to the nitty-gritty of that how do we how do we access that what are how do we get to the what you know what are the things that we have to do so same word surrender surrender it's going to be surrender every single time because so the I fear find, plays. So surrendering for me is is a more meditative. It's me, I, I, it's a meditative state. You know, I can't when I'm doing the day by day stuff. You know, I work in a physical realm because I'm a, a fitness teacher, a personal trainer, a health and nutrition person who 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 really zeroes in on my um, client. And then when I have me time, the only way I can kind of drop off from that is to meditate and then 
I start trying to manifest these things that are are essential for me to move forward, to not have fear, to have, you know, I, I long for a deep connection with somebody that I haven't had in eight years. You know, I, I long for um, success in this world of helping others. You know, we talked about it before the show. It's really huge for me to help people uh, you, what I'm learning to get it out there in longevity with quality and having, you know, we're all going to the same place, we're all going to age, but how do we do it successfully in terms of not being obsessed with a wrinkle and not, you know, and right. having the need to, to look a certain way or act a certain way? How do we embrace it, you know? So um, I, I'm wondering, am I, am I doing the right thing? Am I surrendering through my meditation? How, what other ways do I surrender? It's really on a, con again, it's on a conscious choice basis. So to do it solely in meditation and then not apply it the rest of the, you know, 23 hours and, uh, the day. and 40 yeah. minutes yeah. is You're right. is not sustainable okay. because it really, it, like with you with clients, when you're training, whether it's nutrition, whether it's the physical training, you know, we're talking about tuning into the body. We're talking about listening to our own bodies. Right. When we don't listen, and again, people know, you can tune into your body, you with a client. This is where your intuition, your, your clairvoyance will be extraordinarily helpful to a client because you can come in and say, here's the regime that we're going to do today. Here's the workout program, or mm -hmm. I've charted it for the next eight weeks for you. Right. And yet, if there's an ailment or a, a physical yeah, sprain goes, or whatever, it's yeah. out the window, mm -hmm. right? So again, that's physical. Well, what if it's you're in tune with your client from an intuitive standpoint and you say, you know what? I can see that today I thought we were going to do, you know, biceps and this and that and some stretching, whatever. But what we really need to do is work on your core. Yeah. There's something here going on with your core. So we're going to switch I do do that, today. by the way. Well, this, this is, is what not, I'm saying. Yeah, this yeah. is how you're applying yeah, yeah. intuitiveness as opposed to this regimented. Of what, of what schedule here's the, and what here's, I have to exactly, do. Exactly. Okay. And so when we don't listen, it's the same thing with eating. So if we listen. Yes. Mindful eating. I talk about it all the time, paying attention and not and knowing that stuff's going in your body. And it's going to do something once it gets past the, once you start digesting it, it's got it's got a mission, you know, yeah. and, and people mind mindlessly eat, you know, we, we kind of eat with our eyes and, yeah. and our and taste buds. Emotionally eat. Yeah. And yeah. 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 There's all kinds massive of massive piece of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's the way I, I make people realize, you know, what they're doing and how they can change it. And it takes, so, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, with what I do with my clients is it takes time, you know, it's yeah. changing a habit and we exactly. change habits over a period of time, which would be me accessing, being able to surrender. I have to sort of give myself time to learn how to do that because yeah. I've never done that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Because that's, you are retraining. And again, we're retraining ourselves. Right. So we do it with our mind, you know, we mentally train every day, whether it's our job or reading a crossword puzzle, whatever, we're mentally training. Right. We physically train, we work out, we walk, we run marathons, we, yeah. okay, we nutritionally train. But we have to train our souls. We to... don't train our souls. Oh, no. We don't, we, people yeah. don't pay attention to them. That's what we were them. talking about at the top of the show. Exactly. And do you know we're down to our last minute? Are we already? <laughs> I know, How did that happen? And there was a reason why I have a longer show because <laughs> we got into it. Um, so, you know, I, I, I want to wrap up with the way you want to wrap up. So I want to make sure and then I want you to let my audience know how they can reach you so they they can come to you with a burning question or change in life that's going on with them and you can help them sort it out. Um, what 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 would you say is the most important aspect of, of accessing the soul and what and what we're talking about here that people need to know it would be to immediately listen to your soul listen to that internal gps begin honing it training it trusting it testing it it will test you <laughs> yeah and so do that so that you start shifting from your mind your ego to your soul because your soul is your true north. Okay. It will always lead you. And I think the whole ego issue is a whole other show. Yeah. 
because we lead with our egos, yes. which again was me saying before, I'm so concerned about what people think. Right. That's ego. Yeah. That's total it's an ego, ego identity yeah. mask. So right. hard to undo that when you've had years of being learned to, to, to lead that way. So final words, words of wisdom, final thoughts, and um, then how people can reach you. Um, final thoughts and wisdom is we all have this ability and we sit in a world where goodness and kindness and heart-centered wellness is so important, more important than ever. So tune in, train, listen, and, and be kind to your fellow human being. Be kind, be kind to yourself. Yeah. That starts here because then you're it's kind. A, it's beyond. always an inside it's job. It's always the number one thing I yeah. have is to be kind. And how do people find you, James? They, you can find me at my website, www.dearjames.com, and the same on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yes, good. And it's up on the UBN Go website as well, under my show, all and my Instagram, Balanced Life by Debbie. And I have to thank you for your time and your energy and helping me surrender today. Oh, absolutely. And thank I you. thank you. Now, if you have a question, you should go to my Facebook page, which is Fit by Design. And it says Balanced Life at the top of it, but you have to access it as Fit by Design. And then you can go right where the show was running and right under comments, you can ask a question, James, or I will get back to you. We really would uh, appreciate doing that for you if we can. And I want to thank you all for joining me, joining us today. And I also want you to remember to go out and connect to a healthier you. And we'll see you in two weeks on the 25th. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. It was great.